from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. This is episode two, segment one. Remember which freight car this is? It was mentioned in the video clips in the last episode. It's called a gondola. There are no doors on the side, no chutes on the bottom for unloading. It's not a real tall car, and this example is very long. You'll see a full-size gondola in some of our video clips today. In our previous episode, we introduced this program and began building the foundation for future instruction by introducing our theme for this first unit. The theme is trains and railroads. I suggested starting a notebook. Here are the things we put in the notebook during the previous episode. We made a list of sights and sounds from the first video clip. You could have used your home language if you chose. The idea here is to activate your previous knowledge about the theme. In the second segment, I had viewers watch a video clip and estimate about how much of the narration they understood. We started a word list from another video clip, choosing nouns that help us build our foundation for the theme of trains and railroads. Then we looked at those words and used some strategies to find their meanings. Finally, we added more words. We'll work with these later in the program. Right now, we're going to view a video clip on freight trains. Your assignment is to watch and see how much you understand. Let's watch Freight Trains, Part 1. Freight trains. The United States has more of them than passenger trains. Freight is an English word that refers to anything that is carried from one place to another. Freight trains carry things on rails. This freight train is being pulled through Eugene, Oregon by locomotives. Can you count the locomotives on this train? Locomotive is another word for engine. It's the power that makes a train move. These diesel electric locomotives are hitched together. This train requires four locomotives. The wagons pulled by locomotives are called cars. These cars are carrying wood products one of Oregon's industries. These are perhaps the best known of the cars on a freight train, box cars. They have doors on the sides, there's a series of books called The Boxcar Children about kids who live in a boxcar. In the past, people used to board empty boxcars to travel. Behind these boxcars, this freight train is pulling tank cars. They carry liquids and are cylinder shaped. Now back to cars that are carrying wood products. In English, we can use the words made up of to describe something with more than one part. For example, you could say that this train is made up of locomotives, box cars, and tank cars. You could use more advanced English. Instead of saying is made up of, you could say consists of. In fact, the word consist is used in railroading as a noun by shifting the accent to the front of the word. 
this train has a consist of locomotives, box cars, and tank cars. Now we see utility poles carried on flat cars. Now, more wood products. Here's an empty flat car, followed by a gondola. And now we see lumber cars. These are the same things that had the wood products on them, only now they're not covered and you can see that it's carrying lumber. These cars are also called skeleton cars. The last two cars are called hopper cars. They unload from the bottom. Notice there's no doors on the side. And this is the last car on this freight train and there's a red light at the back of it so that it can be seen as the back of the train. The yellow locomotives tell us that this is a Union Pacific train. This is a Union Pacific freight train traveling along the south bank of the Columbia River, which forms the border between Oregon and Washington. What kinds of train cars can you recognize on this train? Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English an educational program for intermediate level English learners. I'm John Letts. You're watching episode two, segment one. Let's use the video clip you just saw to introduce our first English language function. If you missed the previous video, you can watch it on letscreate.org. Choose episode two, segment one to find the clip. A basic language function that's easy to ramp up is that of describing an object. Nothing shows the world your limits in English more than always using the same basic words to describe something. We're describing a freight train by listing its parts. If you've reached the intermediate level, you can do this by saying a freight train has a locomotive, lumber cars, box cars, tank cars, hopper cars, and a gondola, and that is perfectly correct English. If you want to ramp up your English higher, you can use the phrase is made up of instead of has and add some descriptive words in terms like this. Try this one. A freight train is made up of four locomotives, many lumber cars and some box cars, tank cars, hopper cars, and a gondola. Even better, use the word, the, uh, excuse me, the word consists of. A freight train consists of four locomotives, many lumber cars, some box cars, tank cars, hopper cars, and a gondola. It's a small change, but you'll come across as more fluent in the language. Another tip, we started sentences with a freight train, and nothing wrong with that, but it's a little too general. Not every train has those cars. It works better to identify the train. So we're going to do that right now. And so what we have is the freight train I see consists of four locomotives, many lumber cars, and you can continue on with the sentence. Now, think of other objects you can describe by listing their parts. Some suggestions, your bedroom, a car, your outfit, your classroom. Make some sentences describing these or other objects by listing their parts. Don't worry about listing every part. You're practicing the language, not your knowledge base. Do as many of these sentences as you want for your homework. And that's all for segment one of episode two. We'll be back with segment two after this.